Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good after midnight. Whatever time you're watching this video, welcome to another episode of Greg Blends. And in today's episode, I'm going to be addressing a question I've been getting a lot recently. So it seems like everybody is really curious if a file from Blender 1.0 made on an Irix virtual machine, or a real machine for that matter, uh, will be able to open in the latest version of Blender. Now, 2.83 long-term support is kind of the official latest version of Blender, but 2.9, you can get the alpha version, so we're going to try it in 2.8 and 2.9 and see if we can open that file. Now, the problem that I was left with was I can get files onto the virtual machine by making a CD-ROM uh, or an image of a CD-ROM, but that image will be read-only. So I can't copy files to it and then get them off the system. So in one of my previous videos, I made a plea for help. If anybody knows how to get files off a MAME virtual machine, please let me know. So I got this lovely email from Christopher Eggert, and he says, Hi, Greg. I saw your video about Blender 1.0 Donut. Nice video. Thank you. And I wondered if you could extract the files from it. So I downloaded the blank CHD, which is the hard drive in MAME, and had a go at it. As you've mentioned, you can convert the CHD to an image file, which you can see me doing here. So this is the first kind of gotcha that I had. Basically, if you look at the MAME directory, there is the CHD file, irix65.chd, which is the hard drive you use to boot into irix. Now, if you make changes to some of the files on the operating system, they will be changed on this hard drive. Uh, however, um, if you make a lot of changes, they'll be stored in a diff object. And so the question is, how do I convert this CHD with the diff into uh, an IMG file? So I actually tried it without the diff and the Blender files were missing. So I had to do some Googling and I eventually found out that you can run the command chd extract hd dash ip irix 65chd So IP stands for input parent and you need a parent hard drive to attach the diff to. Then dash i diff folder slash irix65.diff and then dash o irix.img. And so once I, I ran that, I was able to get the img file. And that would include the diff, so all of the changes I made in irix. He says, to extract the files, you need Linux, for example, in a VM in VirtualBox. Ubuntu 20.04 should work just fine for this. All right, so I installed an Ubuntu VirtualBox. This is the first time I've used Ubuntu in a decade. Um, I, I use Debian as my server for gmailer.net. However, that is headless. It's just a server. I don't see the UI or anything. So uh, this is going to be fun to play in Ubuntu for a little while. And now that I have that Ubuntu set up, I copied the IMG file into my virtual machine. And it says once you have the IMG in your virtual machine, you need to use the terminal to take a look at the image file with fdisk. Here I've called it on irixhd.image. So I ran the same thing, fdisk-l, with my irix.image. And I get output that is pretty much identical. It's the same size, the geometry is the same, and then it has partitions. And he says, as you can see, there's an XFS file system in the first partition. And then it says 266240, etc. Because the IRIX partition table is so old, nothing available can access the partition. But we can just manually cut it out and call it a day. All information needed are there. To do this, we have to use the tool DD. Specify where to start and how much it should extract. Um, so here's the, the command that he wants me to write. And so... I write the command and it seems to be doing its thing. Interestingly enough, my start or skip position and count slash size uh, values are the same as his, despite the fact that my drive has more data, but that could just be because the partition is fixed in size. So um, I added data, but it was stored in the diff. And now that that is done, uh, it says after this, you can call the tool file on the extracted xfs.img. It should look like this, which I did. And as you can see, it looks correct. Uh, and now the part where a real Linux virtual machine is needed. XFS is a file system that is still around. It's supported by Linux, and Linux can actually somewhat mount this old thing. So the only thing left to do is sudo uh, mount xfs image slash mnt dash ro comma no recovery. 
and you should be able to access the whole installation if you navigate to MNT. So this is exactly what I did. I uh, mounted it, as you can see here. I was able to go into the mounted partition that we extracted, and I was able to copy uh, on the command line to my desktop the Blender donut file that we created. So here I am in 2.9, and I'm trying to go to my desktop to open that file. And it says, library file loading empty scene. So in 2.9, the file was not directly compatible. That was a bummer. So we know now that you cannot open a file from Blender 1.0 in 2.9, but I did not give up. My next step was just to try to double click the file and use my default install of Blender. And again, it did not work. So I booted up my trusty Windows XP virtual machine and I tried to see if the file was good at all or if it was corrupt. So I tried to open it in 1.6, which is just one version after Blender 1.0. So here we are in Windows XP. I'm going to navigate to my directory where I have my shared files between this and Windows 10. And it opens. I got my, my donut effectively extracted from Irix and I can see it in Windows XP, which is really promising. So now I'm going to save this file as a new version using 1.6 and hopefully Modern Blender will be able to open this. It's not as cool as going from 1.0 directly to 1.8 or 2.8, but here we go. We're in 2.8 and the donut scene is there. Now my normals are all messed up, so I have to go and select everything and say recalculate normals outside, but there we go, we have it. So my next uh, step was to try to set up rendering. Now, what's cool is that these materials were made in Blender internal render in Blender 1.0 but we're going to be rendering in cycles and the colors did come through. I remember there used to be a little bit of, um, uh, like in the early days of cycles, it wouldn't correctly import the materials, you'd lose color and texture data, but it seems like uh, as cycles improved, it learned how to import those things from uh, uh, Blender internal. So all the color data is there. Um, I'm just adding an HDRI image for the background so that I could render with some uh, HDR light. Of course, I have to increase my samples and change my resolution, but I try a few different uh, resolutions here. So I'm going to go into compositing and preemptively set up my denoising data so that I can have a nice noiseless final render. And we're off. I'm going to speed up the render because obviously this took a little while. I probably made the samples too high. I probably made the resolution a little bit too much, but um, this was my first take. The Exposure on the HDRI for the background and lighting was a little bit too hot, so this wasn't the best render, but I will fix that in my next attempt. And there we go. It's, it's a little bit bright, but it looks amazing. <laughs> that was rendered directly. I mean, we made a stop saving the file in 1.6, but this render was modeled and materialed. Is that a word? Materialed in Blender 1.0, and here we just rendered it in 2.8 using cycles. So um, there's a couple of uh, adjustments I want to make to the scene. For example, the cup looks like it's hovering, the plate looks like it's hovering, um, and obviously some of the things should be shaded smooth. I tried shading smooth in Blender 1.0. It looked like it did work because some of the stuff was shaded smooth. It just didn't draw it in, in Blender 1.0. And I think what happened there is that Blender 1.0 and actually a lot of the early blenders would only shade smooth during render time. It wouldn't shade smooth in the viewport. And so it was, the button was doing something in Blender 1.0. I just couldn't see it because I couldn't render. So I moved the mug down, I moved the plate down. Um, I select all the objects and hit shade smooth so that we can have a nice clean render. Of course, I also make the resolution a little bit smaller, change my samples so that it's not uh, too, too long to render, switch to GPU, and of course make the HDRI a little bit less bright. And there we have it. Now I just have to go to the compositing and get that denoising to work because I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong here, but for some reason I always have to go and plug the denoising node back in for it to, to kind of register that I want it to be there. So, <laughs> and wow, I love how it came out because even though we're using cycles with like a super modern render engine in Blender 2.8, and it has like the denoising and everything because those materials are super basic and the modeling is super basic. I mean, it came from Blender 1.0. It still has an aesthetic of like early CGI. 
I, I really didn't know what it was going to look like. Obviously, there, I didn't put any bump maps or specular maps or any kind of other maps on there. But I love how it kind of has a flat, basic look, which really fits the aesthetic of early renders. So I'm happy that it did come out that way, and I'm happy that we were able to get it. We did have to make a stop, you know, like I said, from Blender 1.0 to Blender 1.6 in Windows XP. But after we saved the file in Blender 1.6, it worked. I was able to get it to render in 2.8. And now I'm going to try in 2.9. So I'm going to save the scene in Blender 2.8 and just open that with 2.9. So there's going to be an extra hop. It's going to go 1.0 to 1.6, 1.6 to 2.8, and 2.8 to 2.9. Overall, the, the fact that the materials and the geometry was able to carry over is stunning, is fantastic. I'm so happy um, that somebody helped me out, that Christopher got that email to me and showed me how to get files off because now we know. You cannot go from 1.0 to 2.8 but you can go from 1.0 to 1.6 to 2.8 or 2.9, which is <laughs> so cool. And, and here, here that is. So I'm just going to open that up again. So it shows that I can't open up the original file, but the one that we just did will open. And when I hit render, it basically renders the same thing because the settings are all the same. 2.9 cycles isn't going to be that different from 2.8. So uh, it, it ended up rendering the same thing in 2.9. But... <laughs> there you go. So to answer everyone's question, um, this is what it looks like in Modern Blender. Uh, you can't go straight to it, but pretty close. 1.6 to 2.8 was, was able to work. One other thing I want to bring up is uh, social media. Ton Rosendell actually tweeted about my you know pursuit to try to get 1.0 running and i can't thank him enough for that that is so awesome uh by the way in case you're curious my twitter is greg stuff as opposed to greg blends i don't use twitter too often but if i get notifications you know i'll interact with you guys so super super stoked that ton the godfather of blender <laughs> got back to me I, I you know that was that made my day and then it looks like this guy I believe that's Alvaro Campos from, looks like Brazil, actually got it working. And he got it working in Linux I'm using Wine to run the Windows version of MAME. Uh, he followed my tutorial to get Blender 1.0 installed, and he made the Taurus. So um, he's watching my world record video. I said to him, try to beat my time, and he said, we'll try still getting used to it. So hopefully I have a competitor to my speed run. I really hope he, he does something with this. Um, it's it really fun for me to see other people play with Blender 1.0. I would love to see some videos from you guys. If you guys are interested, please. I, I made a tutorial for how to install it in Windows 10. And as he has shown, it works in Linux as well. You know, I'm glad I inspired somebody to do something with this. So um, I would love to see more, not just, just me doing everything. I'd love to see other people play with this. Um, then this guy, Flipson, says speed run, in quotes, because, of course, it's kind of a funny use of the word speed run, of the donut tutorial scene in Blender 1.0 by Greg Blends. And so he tweeted that. And then Andrew, Blender Guru, actually says, makes the full donut scene, and he retweeted that. So <laughs> that's awesome. This guy, Dave Abbott, says... Is speedrunning the donut tutorial thing? Please say yes. I would love to see this become a thing. I really want somebody to challenge my time uh, so that I could try again. It's been a couple days since I recorded the speedrun. I'm over the trauma of speedrunning, so I'm ready to give it another go. <laughs> I've also, in the meantime, found some more tips that might help me go faster. So if someone does challenge me, I will definitely be making a a reply speedrun if, if I can beat their time, if they're not too good. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so... Thank you to all the love I've been getting. My channel has been doing really well. Let me see what, what I'm at right now. Holy cow. <laughs> wow, I'm almost at 900. That is crazy. I've been reading all of the comments, uh, replying to as many of them as I can. I love hearing from you guys, so continue to comment. Um, and wow, this is this is incredible. So thank you very much for all the love I've been getting. I will always try to respond to any emails, tweets, or messages on YouTube. I love it. And of course, if you're not already subscribed, remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube shenanigans. I'm going to probably have some more early Blender stuff coming up. I do want to try to do a render 
in early Blender, and I have another idea for a very rare version of Blender. So if I can get that one running, that will be another fun series deep diving into ancient Blender tech. So yeah, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and take it easy.